Hey you, you're super. Hey YouTube, good evening. Merch Hunter Ricky here, and we are talking again about Fabricant 100, this time reviewing chapter 4. I really like this chapter, although I thought, upon the first time of reading it, I just thought it was kind of like a slower chapter, you know, not much happened. I could recap it in about three sentences. She runs through the town, and she catches a shibi, and a lore bomb is dropped. And that's pretty much the chapter, but if you want to get more in depth, which obviously that's why you're here so I really appreciate that what we really had is the guy the human the regular human supposedly his name is Luca now she throws a punch at the end of the at the beginning of the chapter we saw her standing on the hood of the car at the end of the third chapter Fabricant 100 and she like completely decimates the seat he's in but he has some sort of superhuman quality to just ignore physics and he's super fast so he's either drive like a, he has the, either has the ability to drive with precision at a speed that just does not make sense or he can teleport his car around i don't really understand what that power is yet but he can also move very very quickly like super speed almost super agile running and jumping so what his plan was luca he is trying to prove to ashibi that Fabricant 100 will succumb to the nature of a fabricant and kill people left and right. He tries to do this by taking a shibi further in through a crowd of people in a busy market. Fabricant 100 pretty much ignores this entirely, stops running at her super speed because Luca thought that her speed would kill someone. She already stopped immediately and she she stole some dudes like super beef cut like a beef, like a whole brisket or something and she cuts it up and turns it into like a gut rope and throws it across the town and slides across the market and just straight up catches a shibi like that's literally the whole chapter minus you know some thought plot points and whatnot that we're about to discuss but after she catches him luca's like dude why are you doing this why did it why did you reject my protection and a shibi's like i didn't ask for it and luca responds you know where are you going next why why are you doing this all the way and he explains like he'll like ashibi explains he will go through any length he'll read as much newspaper that he has to to kill all the fabricants and that's when luca just kind of goes oh she didn't tell him hey just so you know kid you don't have to kill the fabricants to end the casualties against humanity and Fabricant 100 immediately starts sweating and you know Ashibi looks at her like of course you didn't tell me So this brought a couple thoughts to mind. I probably I don't plan on making this a long video. So don't worry about that What I was wondering is like how do you just stop all the fabricants from hurting people if that's their main goal? So a couple ideas came into my mind So idea number one is that they are all part of not like a hive mind But maybe like a power generator somewhere or they all have like a type of battery that powers them since they're not actually human, right? This will actually probably give us more lore, more information about how these fabricants actually work, you know? This whole time I've been like, so what are they? Are they dolls? Are they robots? So if there's a way to stop them without people dying, but without killing all the fabricants, it has to be something along the lines of just turning off an off switch or capturing them without killing them. So it's either one or the other. Let me know in the comments what you think down below. But honestly, this is exactly what I like about the, th the series so far. It just hasn't taken like a foot off the gas. It's just slowly letting up on the gas every once in a while to break for a second and to talk shop. I think that's going to carry the series very far. If I were to give this chapter a rating, I would give it a solid 75. Like this is a great chapter. It was a little bit very one track but i feel like every single trap chapter is going to be like one solid adventure if not slowly leading into the next one right so maybe chapter three and four maybe even five will be like a you know it'll be the like this mini adventure or it's going to lead into like a larger arc so it's really too early in the series to tell but you know issue one was lore bomb and mini adventure issue two was straight up an adventure with a beginning and closure and issue three was you know like a little bit of lore a little bit of chill time and then BAM Ashibi's kidnapped <laughs> you know and then at the very end you think it's gonna be a closure but no it's the beginning of something completely new so 
The interesting part about this chapter, I haven't brought it up for a reason yet, is that Ashibi actually says, like, he ditches 100, it looks like. After, <laughs> it's kind of funny, after uh, Lucas tells him what he tells him, and Ashibi looks at 100, and she's all sweaty, he's like, so will you go with me or stay with her? And he's like, I'll go with you. And Fabricant's like, no! So, I don't know what that means for issue 5, but I'm sure it's going to get juicy. I'm sure it's going to get interesting. Either Fabricant's going to straight up be like, I'm sorry I lied, and make Ashibi stay with her, or he's going to go with Luca, and things are going to go downhill from there. Because I genuinely don't think that the series is going to turn its head to make Fabricant 100 the villain of the rest of the series, and Luca and Ashibi are going to have this new and form relationship. Like, they haven't even named the, the second guy with Luca, you know? I, I think this might this little chunk might last till chapter six or seven that's my prediction obviously we're going to get the rest of the info in chapter five because this author doesn't seem to like holding things back so i like that a lot like imagine if we had gotten further in the series and then they dropped this bomb after they've killed like all the fabricants minus 10 you know no we still got roughly 60 something next i know i said i'd get a fabric counter going so i'll add it in the edits but I don't remember right now off the top of my head because, you know, holidays and all that. Speaking of which, I hope you all had a Merry Christmas, and I hope you all have a safe and responsible New Year's. But final thoughts on the series and the chapter. First, the series as a whole, I'm really liking it. It's quirky, it's serious, yet it's kind of creepy, and it's kind of cool. And I didn't expect to feel that from this manga, and I really like the way that they present Ashibi and Fabricant's relationship. They're not just giving us a, a friendly hoity-toity experience. No, it's straight up like complex issue after complex issue, but maintaining a simple driven story in the manga. So what we get is, you know, a story that can be summed up really fast per issue, but when you look deeper into it, there's way more underneath the surface. And I just really like that. So if you agreed with what I said in this video, let me know. This is a little bit of my little shorter-sighted video, but to to talk about the chapter again in one quick motion, seeing Ashibi flip at the very end, I like that because technically he should not be loving a fabricant, right? He even says it, although she saved me just now, the pain in my heart does not stop. So maybe we might not actually get the duo of Ashibi and Fabricant 100 as a permanent series duo. I don't know. Personally, I don't think that'll happen. My thing, I, I personally think she will make amends with Ashibi. Not 100% sure on that, though. So, you know, what I like is right now, I have no clue what's going to happen next chapter, and I cannot wait for that chapter. So, like I said, I'm going to start rating these chapters as a whole. And like I said, this one, I'll give it a solid 75, which is a great score, you know? I know some people say that's an average score, not the best score. So you know what? Let me just say that on my rating scale, a 75 is actually pretty good. This chapter did everything it needed to while still being just a little bit boring, you know? Like, it was really just a small chase scene. Like, if you were to actually boil it down, like, she hopped over a crowd of people and grabbed the Shivi. This is what happened, you know? But... At the same time, so much more happened after that in just a couple words being exchanged between Ashibi and Luca that I don't know where the series is headed now, and I love that. Like I said in my issue for Chapter 2 review, I thought that those people would be Fabricant 99 and 98, but no. Instead, it was two humans who are trying to save Ashibi from Fabricant 100, or they have ulterior motives, which I genuinely think they do. So, I don't really have much to pontificate on else, so have a great, great holiday season. Merry Christmas. I hope your Christmas was great. I hope you got the gift you wanted, because you deserve it. And I hope your New Year's is safe and responsible. And guess what? Even if you're alone on New Year's, that's still something to be proud of. And I want you to set a goal, not a pointless resolution. Just set something simple for yourself going into the new year. Maybe I'll work out a little bit more. Maybe I'll eat better. Don't, you know, don't try to change the world in a year. Just try to make a better you for the next day. And have a good one, guys. My name's Merch Hunter Ricky, and I really appreciate you all. Good night. And as always, like and subscribe to be part of the Merch Hunting Tribe, and here's another video. Have a good one.